London has so many football teams, but the top three are Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham. For now, because we're going to make West Ham the best team in London. We're not going to do it by winning trophies because we're about 40 behind Arsenal. But we're going to finish above every single London team in the Premier League. So we can officially say that West Ham are the best team in London. It may take loads of seasons. It may only take one. They've made really good transfers in real life. And if we carry that on, I think this is something we can definitely achieve. If you are excited for this video, though, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, turn notifications. And let's get straight into it. I'm so happy with the start in 11. If you look at that, there's so many changes to it because of the transfers they've made in real life. Wambasaka, Tadebo, and Kilman are all in the back four. None of them played for West Ham last season. Rodriguez in at DM is so good as well. And Fulkrug up front could be an absolute game changer. But if we do want to add some more players to the team, we've been given £66 million to do so. That is such a generous budget. But they are expecting a lot from us. Because they do want us to finish in the Champions League spot and win the FA Cup. That is a really, really difficult challenge. But if we want to finish above all the London teams, such as Arsenal, Tottenham and Chelsea, realistically, it's a minimum of a Champions League spot. We're probably going to need second, maybe even to win the league. But I think we actually need to appreciate the business they've done in real life. So Rodriguez is an 83 rated DM who's only 28 and they got him on a free transfer. That's absolutely ridiculous. Fulkrug is a baller of a striker. You've seen him for Germany. You've seen him for Dortmund. An unbelievable striker. And they got him as well. Wan-Bissaka as well. One of the best defensive players in the entire league. And they gone for like 15 mil. But obviously because of all these players coming in. It does mean players like Zuma. Even sadly players like Suchek may have to be leaving. So if we can get 13 mil for players like Suchek. Who aren't really going to be involved. It does allow us to you know, invest more in the squad. And try and beat the other London clubs. Look how good Carlos Pinto looks. He's 17 years old and already 61 rated. The youth academy here have produced an absolute baller. Maybe it's a Carlos Alberto regen. I don't know. Either way, he is getting promoted to the senior team. And then he is instantly getting added to the loan list. If we're selling players like Zuma, Carlos Pinto could definitely be the future of this defence. And we've just had a massive clear out of West Ham. Three players have gone. So firstly, Maxwell Corne to Crystal Palace for £9.2 million, and then Kurt Zuma to Juve for £15.1 million, and finally, Thomas Suchek has gone to Manchester United for £14.4 million. There we land, leaving us with £104 million in the budget. And you might be thinking, why is David Moyes still here? They sacked him. Well, we think he deserves another chance. You can't go wrong with Moisey, and he's potentially got an easy job right now, because all he needs is a left back potentially, and he's got £104 million to do so. Surely we can't mess this up. There are some really weird things going on with these transfers. So firstly, Carlos Pinto has taken so long to accept a loan, he's now 18 years old. This is the seventh attempt of loaning him out, and he's rejected every single club. And secondly, obviously remember, we've got wan from Man United for 15 mil. Well, they now want Su Fao for 10 and a half. I mean, interesting business after they wanted Su Czech as well. Maybe they fancy reuniting the Czechs. But either way, weird business from United and Ten Hag. But that's not very surprising. And we have sorted our only signing of the first window. Jarrell Hatto has joined from Ajax for £5 million. And you might be thinking, I thought he was a centre-back. He is, but as you can see here, it only takes him two weeks to convert to a left-back. And he is built for it. High medium work rates, 85 pace. He could be a future, future star for us. 73 rated at 17 years old. He is going to grow so quickly throughout this first season. And we drew to Chelsea. That's not too bad. If we want to go above them, we can draw and beat every other team. That is absolutely fine. But Brighton do hand us our first loss of the season. But we get back to winning ways against Luton. A decent first month. We've made it to January. We're going to have a mid-season review. So we are sat in 10th, which is not good. And even worse... Spurs and Chelsea are both sat in the top four. Obviously, we're not going to do it this season. That's fair enough. But it's not promising the fact that Chelsea are pushing City for the league title. Because that's showing us the levels we're going to have to be at. But if we check out our individual players' stats this season, maybe we can bring a few players in in January and try and save the second half of this season. Okay, so Kudus has had a good season. Nine goals, four assists. That's not too bad. Paqueta, eight goals, six assists. Fulcrook, seven in 11 in the Prem is very good. But... Why is he playing so little? And why is Ward-Prowse basically starting every single game? Why is Ings getting minutes? This is an absolute nightmare. Definitely going to have to fix this. But 
I think we could do with another sign-in, and it is going to be a midfielder, I think. The fact that Ward-Prowse is playing this often, I'm not a big fan of it. He's 79 rated, and Chelsea are competing with Man City. Do you know what I mean? There's levels to this, and he's not quite that level. We have £123 million in the budget, so it would be a shame not to spend it. And I did actually notice here that Kamavinga has gone to PSG. Not that we were going to sign him, but... Zaya Emery might be out of favour at PSG now. So we are going to go in for him. Look how good he looks. And hopefully we can get a good deal secured. And that is exactly what we managed to do. We've managed to get Zaya Emery for £45 million. He's an absolute baller and going to grow so much for us. Look how all round his stats are. And look at him fitting into this team. It takes it to a whole other level. He's only 80 rated now. But if you've used Zaya Emery on career mode, you know how quickly he grows. It's not the most realistic signing ever, but we're here to beat Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal. We can't be messing about. Zaire Emery to West Ham United, there we land. And at the end of Season 1, as you can see, we finished in the exact same spot that we were in halfway through the season. It wasn't just Arsenal, Tottenham and Chelsea that finished above us, but Fulham as well. Big changes are going to need to be made in the window because next season, I'm not looking for 10th place. I'm looking for a top 4 finish. So it's going to be a busy window. But let's check the Europa League as well. Because if you look here, we're in the final against Manchester City. So they dropped out of the Champions League. They're into the Europa League and they're facing us. Who have we beat to get there though? So we knocked out Freiburg. It was Man City Liverpool, by the way, in the semi-final. That is crazy. But we knocked out Freiburg, Newcastle, that's big. Uh, Slavia Pra. And then, yeah, we came second in our group to Freiburg as well. So... All in all, a mixed season. Not very good in the league, but very good in the Europa League. It's time to check out, though, the individual stats of players. Who has shone for us? Kudus has had a great season. 15 goals, 10 assists in the Premier League. Fulcrook, 10 in 10 in the Europa League, but only got 9 in the Premier. He's going to have to improve that next season if we want to climb the table. Baketa, 13 and 8 in the Premier League. Danny Ings even got 4 and 8 in the Europa League as well. Zara Emery... Came in, he's already got up two ratings. He dropped six and three and 11 and three goals in five in the Europa League. Bowen, a pretty disappointing season. War Prowse, too many minutes for my liking. All in all, quite mediocre if I'm being honest. It's time to play the final against Man City and then get straight into season two. Oh my God, look at this state of our team we've been left with. Zaire Emery injured, Alvarez injured, War Prowse tired, Rodriguez tired. Kudus tired, Paqueta tired, everyone is knackered. I don't, honestly, I don't even know how to deal with that mess. It's against Man City as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to instantly just quick sim and let it happen. Obviously, by the way, it says beginner up there, but that doesn't affect sims. And we haven't played a game anyway, so it doesn't matter. But the quick sim, we're going to auto replace it just for this match. And yeah, we lost 3-1. I can't say I'm too surprised. Look at their goal scorers though. They had Grealish, De Bruyne and Foden. Like, there's levels to this still, but... Getting to the final is a very big achievement. I just want to get into Season 2 and make some big, big changes. And at the start of Season 2, we've been given £120 million to spend. And with this being our current team, we can definitely spend a lot of that. We might need a starting centre-back. 77 rate just isn't good enough. And a Gwed on the bench, not going to lie, I just don't massively want to use him. So we might bring in a centre-back. We might bring in an attacker as well because Fulcrook is now 31, almost 32. There's a lot of things that can be done here. It's just working out who needs to stay, who needs to go. And in terms of people going, we've received a lot of offers. Firstly, Pinto, once again, is refusing to go out on loan. It's an absolute nightmare. He's still here. He's soon going to be 19. We are going to let Sufal go this time. He was, he's of no use to us. Aguered is also going to go. Mavropanos is also going to go. We are completely clearing out this team. Wambasaka, we'd quite like to keep him. But everyone else they can go and our transfer budget is going to go crazy when those people have sold once again we've had a massive clear out of the west ham squad so firstly mavra panos to newcastle for 18 million pounds and then aguerd to chelsea for 15.5 million pounds and then wamba saka to liverpool for 21 and a half million pounds we did want to keep wamba saka but he didn't want to stay. And honestly, it was just affecting our manager rating, having so many unhappy players. I didn't want to see him go, but he basically forced my hand. And the biggest of them all, Carlos Pinto has finally gone on loan. It's taken just over a year, but Orlando City is clearly the place he wanted to go. 
But don't worry, we haven't just sold all those players without thinking of bringing anyone in. Because we've made two massive, crucial sign-ins. The first one is Christian Pulisic coming from AC Milan, the former Chelsea man. If we want to beat Chelsea, why not sign their ex-players? The LeBron James of soccer for £59.9 million. Pounds. And also a centre-back, Nathan Ake from Manchester City for £30 million. Pounds. Hopefully he will turn out to be a bargain. Because if you look at them both in the team, they have elevated it massively. Ake in at left centre-back, Pulisic in at right wing. After the sales though, right back is definitely a, is definitely a hole. Because Soufal is going as well. And maybe even a striker to drop Fulcrook to the bench. But after those two signings, I think our squad will actually be good enough to compete with Tottenham, even Fulham, Chelsea and Arsenal. If you don't recognise some players such as Travis here, that's because basically I was on the brink of getting sacked after losing the final. So I had to complete some objectives. It's FC24. It happened. But on a more positive note, Philip Strasser in the academy could be a future baller. He's only 51 rated. But he is only 16 years old still. And with a potential of up to 94, he could be an absolute joke. But he's not going to solve our striker issue right now. £72 million though, that might help it. A striker and a right back and then we're ready for season two. And we've managed to sort ourselves a striker and a right back. So firstly, striker is Jonathan David for £40.4 million. He is only 82 rated, but is only 24 years old. And I really like the look of him. And secondly, the right back is Tino Livramento from Newcastle for £33 million pounds, plus Luis Chavez, who is just someone we signed to complete an objective. So, after both of those signings, our team is looking like an absolute joke. The back four, Livramento, Todibo, Ake, Hato, then Zaire Emery and Rodriguez, Pulisic, Kudus, Paqueta, with Jonathan David up front. And off the bench now, we have Fulcrook, Bowen, Somerville, Oh, the team is an absolute joke. We are now finally ready to sim through season two. The board only want us to finish in a Europa League spot, but we know that isn't going to be good enough to beat Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham. We couldn't even beat Fulham last year. So remember, if we finish above every single London team in the Premier League, we have completed the challenge. Now, let's sim through and find out. We've made it to January and as you can see, we're second in the league. Arsenal are breathing down our neck just four points off. But we must have been on some crazy form here to get into second place. We've been in no European competition, so maybe that's made it easier. Let's check out though the individual squad stats. I don't think I'm going to be buying any players if this is how well we're performing. Kudus, 13 goals and 8 assists in 18 Premier League games. Jonathan David, 11 goals, 3 assists in 16 games. Baqueta, 6 and 2, it's good. Pulisic, 5 and 4, it's good. Zara Emery, 4 and 6. Okay, I get the vibe. Everywhere is just split round. From left back, Hato's got 2 goals, 3 assists. That's very impressive. Okay, okay, I see what's happened here. Everyone is just balling out. That's exactly what you want to see. I don't think there's anything left to do but get to the end of the season and see. Have we been able to beat every London team in the Premier League? We've made it to the end of season two. The background's changed, but the league table hasn't. We are still in second place. Nine points clear of any London club. Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal in that order in fourth, fifth and sixth. But none of them came anywhere near overtaking West Ham. What an achievement. But I can't say it's a surprise because look at the team we ended up building. Kudus is an 87 rated right mid that played attacking midfield all season. Look at those stats. He's absolutely unbelievable. Ake and Tadebo, both 84 at centre-back. Paqueta, 85 on the left. Pulisic, 85 on the right. Zaire Emery, 84. Lif Romento, 82. The list goes on and on and on. But I think before we call this challenge to an end, it's time to check out the individual stats and see who was the one to carry us to this challenge. As you can see, he earned his 87 rating, 21 goals and 13 assists in 36 games. It's absolutely unbelievable. And Jonathan David also got 21 goals in the league. We had two players in the same team on 21 goals. There was a big drop off from there though. Paqueta, eight goals, three assists. I mean, it's good numbers. Cordova was just a player we signed to complete an objective and he even put a shift in for us as well. Pulisic, five and four. It's not the end of the world. To be fair, the stats don't matter. The only stat that matters is that we finished second and above every London club. So, the moment we've been waiting for, 
West Ham, as of this season, are officially the best team in London. And that is where we're going to leave it for this video. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe. Thanks for making it far. And comment down below what challenge or rebuild would you like to see next.